All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our very first virtual spring speaker series for New York. I'm Bree Mullins, your chapter engagement manager for the Northeast. Um, we have a wonderful lineup of presentations today on technology and vision loss today, um, including Dory Rush, Ed Plumacher, and Chansey Fleet. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone of a few keyboard shortcuts to help navigate Zoom during this presentation. Um, first and foremost, when you are um, when you are admitted, you are automatically on mute, just so you know. Um, to unmute, you can do Alt-A, um, Alt-Y to raise your hand, and Control-T to join the chat uh, if you're on a PC. And then, um, Throughout the presentation, please try to hold all questions until the very end. We will be hold, holding a Q&A, uh, but feel free to send your questions in the chat during the presentations. I will be monitor, monitoring the chat and um, we'll keep a running list to make sure that everyone's questions are answered either during the Q&A or, uh, or following the Q&A uh, uh, through email. Um, so before before we get started on today's topic, I do want to introduce you to our chapter leaders and tell you a little bit about the foundation. Um, so we have our president, Carl Gruber. We have our vice president, Fiona Gibbons. Our co-resource chairs, John Sharko and Mike Hannon. And our revenue chair, uh, Veronica Shroka. And last, but certainly not least, our diversity and inclusion chair, Eloise McKim. We are still looking for an education chair. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about what that role would entail, feel free to reach out to myself or Carl Gruber, uh, the president. We will be including our contact information in the follow-up email on Monday. Um, sorry, one second. <laughs> a little bit about the foundation. Um, the Foundation Fighting Blindness is the largest private funder of retinal degenerative disease research in the world and to date has raised over $856 million. We fund lab research, clinical trials, genetic testing, and so much more. And we cover the entire spectrum of inherited retinal disease, including retinitis pigmentosa, Stargardt disease, Usher syndrome, LCA, and dry AMD. Now a little bit about our chapters. Our chapter's vision is to bring community together to end blinding diseases. And the three main areas of focus are sharing our latest advancements of research with the community, providing access to local resources to guide individuals through their personal journey, and accelerating our mission by participating in fundraising events and creating new ways to fundraise locally. Now I'm gonna pass it over to our events director, Katie, to tell you a little bit more about fundraising events coming up in your area. Hey, thanks, Bree, and hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk about our 16th annual New York Vision Walk, which is exactly two weeks from today. As Bree mentioned, I'm Katie Van Bensko, an events director with the foundation, and I work with all of our events in the Northeast region, along with my colleague, Molly Beagleman. So on Saturday, April 9th, we'll be out in Central Park at the Bandshell with registration opening at 9 a.m. and the walk getting underway at 10 a.m. We recommend that you enter the park through the 72nd Street entrances for the most direct route to the band show. The Vision Walk is a rain or shine event and it is family friendly. We'll have music and refreshments, kids activities, and a lot of spirit. Uh, we're also featuring several organizations and programs to have info tables about their services at the, um, about their services at the Vision Walk and you'll wanna check those out um, we're really excited to bring these community groups to the Vision Walk. The walk route itself is a 1.8 mile loop on paved paths throughout Central Park, and that starts and ends at the Banshell Plaza. So the New York Vision Walk brings in supporters from a much, much wider area than just New York City. Um, in addition to teams from across the boroughs, we have groups from Long Island, New Jersey, Westchester and Rockland, upstate New York and Connecticut, as well as donors and supporters from around the world. There is still time to register and make a big impact on this year's Vision Walk if you haven't already signed up. We currently have almost 30 teams registered and we definitely would love to have even more with us on April 9th. So you may know or expect that the New York Vision Walk is one of the largest that the foundation hosts each year. And this year is no exception. Um, we have a $250,000 goal 
And I am so excited to report that we've already raised almost $150,000 and I expect that we'll cross that level this weekend. Thank you to everyone who has already supported the walk in some way from signing up to donating to liking and sharing our social media posts. Every action is helpful and so very appreciated. Um, a big part of our success so far is from our generous Vision Walk sponsors. We have three national partners with Spark, Janssen, and Samsung Platinum Dealers Network. And locally, we have some amazing sponsors as well. And I wanna highlight our top sponsors so far. They are the Rubino Family, the Crane Fund for Widows and Children, the Dominic Family, Mac Products, RWJ Barnabas Health, and the Treber Family. Please join me in thanking these sponsors. One note about our sponsors, the Dominic Family's Gift sponsors a challenge which is going on right now. If you sign up a new team by Monday, you could receive a $250 bonus on your thermometer. And for existing teams, if you add new members by Monday, you could get a $500 bonus. And then for all teams, any that have raised $500 in new money between last Monday when this started through this Monday, will um, could earn a $500 bonus as well. So we have up to $5,000 in play for um, our challenge, which will definitely get us over 150,000. If you need any help registering, personalizing your page, fundraising, or anything else, you can reach out to our events team for help. Um, in a moment, I will drop my email address and the link to the walk into the chat window. Um, and it is also showing on screen for anyone who can, can see it there, but I will put it in the chat window. Um, and we also have a great deal of information on our Vision Walk website, so please do check those out. Um, and our site is give.fightingblindness.org slash New York Vision Walk. Again, all of that's going in the chat. So in addition to the Vision Walk, we have one other event returning in person this spring, which is our Night for Sight Gala taking place on Thursday, May 19th. Uh, this is the result of two of our previous galas, the Fashion and Finance Ball and the, A Vision for the Future joining forces. The event will be held at 583 Park Avenue and will feature amazing entertainment from the band X Ambassadors, whose founding member and keyboardist Casey Harris has LCI. You may have heard of X Ambassadors uh, because they were the focus of the foundation's first Music to Our Eyes program. Um, so they've, sh they've shared their story and they're happy to do it in person with us again. The information about Night for Sight is available at give.fightingblindness.org slash night for sight. And again, I'll put that link in the chat as well in a moment. So I just wanna say again, how excited we are to be returning in person to this spring to bring so many people together to celebrate the 50 years of the Foundation Fighting Blindness, 16 years of the Vision Walk, over a decade of galas, and the dedication and support of thousands of Foundation family members throughout the region and internationally, thanks to uh, some international teams that have, in, and they all inspire us to keep pushing forward day after day and year after year. So it is now my pleasure, as long as his unmute button is working, to turn the program over to Carl Gruber, our chapter president. Carl, can you unmute? I think we are still experiencing some technical difficulties, um, but we will make sure that you hear from Carl later in this uh, presentation. I do want to kick it off to Fiona, um, our vice president, to introduce our very first speaker. Audio settings button menu. Stop my video. Alt plus audio mute. Currently unmuted. Alt plus a button. Three moments has stopped screen share. Alta, the host muted you. Audio now unmuted. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Hi, my name is Fiona Gibbons and I am the Vice President of the New York Chapter for Fi Foundation Fighting Blindness. And it's my privilege to introduce the three speakers today. Many of you who live in the New York area will be very familiar with the names and I'm sure you well know that they have very impressive bios, um, which I will not actually go into in detail today. But the one thing that both, of, that the, all three of them actually have in common is that Firstly, they are extremely good communicators of, you know, particularly complex technology, um, technology uh, issues. And number two is they are just very passionate about sharing the technology 
that they understand and want us to um, want us to understand too in a better format so that we can live better lives. So the first speaker today is Dory Rush. Uh, Dory is the editorial lead at OE Patients, the online magazine, which, is, which helps people to lead to build better lives. Um, and it is something that I really can attest to reading every month. Um, and in, in the interest of full disclosure, Dory is actually a member of our Stargard support group here in Manhattan. And we have a lot of interaction with her and she is extremely generous and inspirational to many of us in the group. She's been very generous with her time and always ready to, to answer any technology questions that we have. So with that, I'll hand it over to Dory now. Dory, are you able to hear us? Is Dory able to hear us? I, I think she needs to unmute. There we go. <laughs> okay. So sorry. Thank you, Fiona. Um, for some reason, terrible problems with the Zoom this morning, and I still am not seeing everybody, but if, as long as you can hear me, I will carry on. This, uh, this fits beautifully into what I'm going to talk about anyway because um, you know, technology is very complicated. But thank you for the introduction, Fiona, and thank you for the invitation as well. I will say a little bit about OE Patients. Um, OE Patients is an online magazine, is really the online magazine uh, for people with vision loss. And it is uh, filled with practical tips and encouraging, empowering advice for living better with vision loss. Um, I think it's very conversational and easy to, easy to read, and that's why we call it a magazine. And I like to very presumptuously call it the O Magazine of Vision Loss. So um, if, if, if browsing a website is not uh, your thing, uh, we do have also a, a subscription, a newsletter subscription that is just comes once a month and, and, and sends you links um, and a synopsis on all the new uh, content we've added. So that's my plug. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is managing your technology. And oh my God, you know, it never fails that my topic is always so uh, connected to <laughs> what I'm experiencing at any, at any given moment. No idea why I've been on Zoom, you know, hundreds of times, no idea why this morning, Zoom not connecting for me. And I couldn't get the video to connect and I tried every different way, but, and I couldn't also find the link for whatever reason in my, in my email. So um, technology is complicated. And I talk to people about it all the time and everyone is always apologizing, you know, that I'm not good with technology. Um, and they think that I'm good. So you can see, I, I, I make mistakes too and things get messed up. Uh, the important thing I think is that we have to really learn to manage the technology that we use, to be very selective about what we choose and, and how we use it so that it enhances our days, right? So that it makes every day a little bit easier. So that it's not a complicated thing that, uh, that you dread using and that you feel that you have to apologize for. No one knows everything. Not even the experts that we speak to at Apple and Microsoft, nobody, right? It's, there's a lot to know and everybody agrees it's getting more and more complicated. So it's up to us to, 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 to keep it uh, in, a manageable, in a manageable zone. Um, so saying that, um, there are a couple of things that I use all the time because even though I am, uh, a technology evangelist and, and, I, and I speak about it and I love it and technology delights me usually, but sometimes it also, you know, makes me a little sick to my stomach <laughs> when I have to deal with things that are difficult or I, I don't know how to deal with or, you know, problematic. Um, so there's always great ways to get help. And this is what's so important. It's important in anybody's life with vision loss, right? You have to find your ways uh, to get help 
because it's 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 kind of a necessity. Although you can't depend on somebody always to do things for you, you have to know how and where to get help that is, uh, you know, that's uh, that you don't feel like you're uh, um, annoying someone or bothering somebody, or and and you don't necessarily have to wait for somebody to come back and help you. So I'm going to talk about two apps. Uh, that are available for both iOS and, um, and for Android. So they're for iPhone and Android phones. They're available on the App Store and on um, Google Play. The first one, which I talked to uh, with the Stargard group about uh, a few weeks ago, um, is called Ira. So a lot of people are, are, these apps have been around for a very long time also. Ira started in 2017, I believe. Um, it is an acronym for AI Remote Assistance. And this is what I call, you know, help in your pocket. Help in your pocket when you need it. Um, depending on how you set up your account and how you choose to use it. So, so Ira is a camera vision, right? Ira connects you in a very simple app interface uh, with what is called a visual interpreter. And, and don't you love that? A visual interpreter. This is someone who can see what you're having difficulty seeing and help you, uh, you know, uh, understand it, define it, describe it, or navigate it. They are professionally trained agents. So they know what they're there to do. Um, and again, I love the fact that you're not bothering them, right? This is what they're there for. This is what they're waiting for. This is what their work is. Uh, okay, so there are a couple of ways. First of all, the app for Ira is free and you can download it and register um, uh, as a, I believe if it still registers the same way, you register as um, a, for guest access. Ira can come in two ways. You can access it for free in thousands of locations. And I'll explain a little bit about that. Or you can subscribe. You can subscribe for um, a subscription so that whenever you need it, you can just click on your phone and call someone. And, and the response time is pretty quick. And they answer the phone and say, hi, Dory, you know, how can we help you? So um, first of all, if you wanted to just test the waters, you can, uh, uh, get on and use Ira in their guest access locations. So the model of this um, app is that if, if you're not paying for your, uh, for your personal time, which is you choose whichever, wherever and whenever you use it, uh, you can use uh, the Ira app in thousands Thousands. I mean, I think I saw how many thousands and it was like mind boggling, but thousands of what, what are known as free access locations. You, wherever you are, they will, it will tell your, your, your app will tell you exactly what's in your vicinity. So for example, um, in, uh, now let me just say, I lost my spot on here. Okay. Okay. So for example, in my vicinity where I am right now, I opened the app this morning and uh, I could have free access at Ira and all of the local Starbucks, Target store, um, Walgreens, Wegmans, AT&T, TD Bank. Um, and there might be more. Uh, so you go into, you know, you go in and you, again, you click on and you access a, an agent. And in those locations, the business is paying for your access. So you can, you can, you can be on as long as you need and they can help you navigate through the store. And for example, in Target, you know, I love to use it when, you know, you, you go to buy something and it comes in 40 different flavors or <laughs> so, so many different uh, uh, scents. And how do you figure out which one they help you read? They also, they also help um, me read uh, expiration dates. It drives me crazy. How do you read those expiration dates? I don't have a magnifier. I certainly don't have the eyes that, that can read that and they can read these things on the packaging. So those are just some examples of how, um, of how helpful they can be. <clears throat> so 
And the next thing is there's a whole list of other, other, these are businesses, these are retail businesses where you can get help. There's a whole list of other, and again, there are so many, and it all is kind of, uh, it all depends on, on your location. But uh, some of the places that you can, okay, so I went through the Bank of America, I told you, yeah. Some of the places, I'm just scrolling down my page, reading gigantic, gigantic time. Um, some of the places, okay, some of the other services that they offer, free, uh, as free guest access. They offer help with, hopefully, hopefully this is a diminishing need, but they've been offering help with COVID at home uh, tests to help you uh, manage a test and read a test because those are totally inaccessible uh, to people with vision loss. They have a number of networks of museums. And I've also known people who just take IRA with their own subscription into a museum and have an afternoon, uh, you know, going through a gallery and have uh, the IRA agent read everything, which is lovely, right? A lovely idea, something you probably couldn't do for a long time, but now you could just go and I would love an afternoon in a museum all by myself, what, looking at art. Um, so, and then there are also museum programs that are part of IRA. Um, this is a beautiful thing. There are transit systems. I'll tell you only two that I know, but they're all over the country. Um, and it depends on if you're in the city, uh, but Minneapolis, St. Paul, all of their transit, um, all of their public transit is um, IRA accessible. So if you're in the transit, uh, you can get an IRA agent to help you. The same with MTA subways in Manhattan. So, you know, I only take the same subways again and again and again that I know because I would never venture into, I can't read the signs. And But if you're if you're in a, in a, in a uh, New York City subway now, you can get an IRA agent to help you all read the train that's coming, all of these things that you, you, you might otherwise have, uh, you know, some difficulty with that, that I certainly do. Um, okay, so I said that, uh, uh, okay, airports, this is huge. And this was my first interest in IRA. And the first article I wrote on OE was IRA at the airport. So, Yes, you can get help at the airport. You can get the meet and greet, right? And my experience with that has been that they bring, you know, they, they walk around, they walk over to you with a sign that you can't read <laughs> and bring you a wheelchair that you probably don't need. Uh, so with Ira, you know, you can get from, from, from wherever you need, from the curb, you can get help navigating airports. There are 50, I think 50 plus airports in the United States that now have free IRA access. Um, and if the airport is not accessible, of course you can pay for the access to uh, <clears throat> provide it through the airport. Okay, so now this is great news, right? LaGuardia, JFK, and Newark Airport, all in the New York area, they are all free IRA access. And that makes me wanna travel, really, because what a relief especially if you have to travel alone. It's such a relief to be able to get it. And even if you're not traveling alone, if you're traveling with a sighted companion, they don't know how to get around either. So it's, it's a great thing to have. It really is. Um, okay, so what's my next note here about? Um, oh, they do ride sharing, ride sharing. So uh, if, you, if you live in Manhattan or in a busy place, uh, when I lived in Manhattan, I found it very difficult to find the Uber or the Lyft. Um, but Ira has uh, an agreement with Lyft and they can connect to your account and they can guide you. And they can also guide you without connecting to your account from the outside. It's a little different uh, to, to an Uber, but they can help you find that car, right? Because in New York City, when the traffic is wild, uh, it's very hard to locate the car that uh, even, no matter how much you communicated that you, you, know, you, you need them to find you. Um, okay. so. The end of my IRA uh, uh, conversation is, if you try it and you like it and you find it useful, um, or if you're traveling, if you're traveling on business, or you're traveling on vacation, or you're going someplace that's unfamiliar, um, or I'll tell you my favorite, my favorite place uh, to use IRA, favorite, which is worth, which is worth every penny, is when I have to go into a building that I'm not familiar with. 
and getting to the floor, even using the elevator and getting to the floor and then finding the room number and making sure that I'm in the right place. This is worth everything to me because that's always a dreadful thing. So for starting at $29 a month, you can get 30 minutes, 30 minutes of access. And there's all kinds of free things in that too. So you get like more than 30 minutes. Um, that's the entry. You can change your, if you can change it, you can increase it every month if you want. Um, and, um, you know, and there. So I just think it's kind of peace of mind. And it's that extra, uh, it's that good set of eyes that you need to borrow when you need it. And it's available for you wherever you are. So I do not represent Ira. I do not get any kind of compensation for this. I know I sound like I'm selling it, but I just think it's really, uh, really, um, a valuable option to have. Okay, can somebody tell me how much time I have left? We can do another two minutes. Two? Okay. If you want to. <laughs> Very quickly. Yes, no, I have more. Um, okay, I wanted to talk about Be My Eyes too. So Be My Eyes, if you're familiar, Be My Eyes was started in 2012. It's another app for visually impaired and blind people. And um, this is a volunteer-based app. And when they started it, uh, you know, I don't know, it had some amazing like 100,000 volunteers and everyone was incredibly impressed. Now they have over 4 million volunteers and helping 250 or 60,000 people with vision loss. So this is a way of, it's really, you know, it's, it's really about the, um, you know, the beauty of people who wanna help others. And it's also a new kind of volunteerism, I think, which is like micro lending of time, right? People, the, it, people can, can help you when you need it and they can log in when they're available. I've used this in many different ways as well. Um, uh, you know, it's not quite the same experience as being guided by somebody who's using GPS and understands um, how you need to get around, but it certainly is helpful. Uh, the way that I really appreciate this, however, is um, that they have what is called specialized help right from the main page of the app. And this is a way I use this all the time because this is um, accessibility support. So specialized health for people with vision loss, and they have a number of different categories, and I'm not going to go through them because I'm running out of time, but uh, my favorite category is technical, uh, technical support. And in this category, I always access, this is the only way to get Google, the only way to get live interaction with Google support for accessibility. So I use it all the time. Also LinkedIn. No other way to get live accessibility support for LinkedIn. Uh, they also have Microsoft. Microsoft has a phone number too, but you can get directly to them without with just you know just tapping on a link. Um, and Spotify. They have about uh, twenty other um, opportunities, including, for example, uh, accessible pharmacy for the blind, and also um, uh, vote vote.org. So if you wanted to register to vote or know what the voting uh, rules are in your uh, district, et cetera, et cetera, really helpful. My last thing I'll say, and I know I'm going over, but I'm sorry, um, is in this line, in this whole line, in this whole topic, um, we also have on OE, one of our most, most utilized pages is called accessibility support lines, you should know. And I've vetted every single one of these. Um, and I think we have 14 now, including Amazon. You may not know Amazon has accessibility support uh, and they need it. <laughs> Apple, we know. Apple started the whole accessibility support thing, thank God. Um, uh, Comcast, Comcast, great support if you have Comcast. HP, HP for your printer. I mean, the only way I can keep my printer going is Thank God, accessibility support from HP, Microsoft, and many, many more. So this is how we get help. And this is how we get help when we need it. And I think it's so important to know and to utilize these things because it takes a tremendous pressure off. Thank you. Thanks, Dory, for an excellent presentation. <clears throat> As we always say in our group, it's a simple little 
you know, technology solutions that make life so much easier for those of us with a visual impairment. And we definitely are honored to have Dory as part of our group. So thanks a million, Dory. Thank you. Um, so next up, we have Ed Plumacher. Ed is an adaptive technology specialist at the Lighthouse Guild here in New York City. And he deals mostly with adapting people towards, uh, towards work situations. Um, so with that, I'll actually hand over to Ed now. Audio now unmuted. Space. Speech on demand. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. great. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Ed Plomacher. I guess I know from scanning the list before I know many of you out there, but uh, I'm the Adaptive Technology Specialist at the Lighthouse. Uh, I do want to give a heads up to Dory. Thank you, Dory, for a great presentation. I also want to thank Dory because she was actually instrumental in my hiring at the Lighthouse six years ago. So um, my role at the Lighthouse is basically fourfold. Uh, primarily, uh, number one priority is what we call job save. So those are people who are experiencing vision loss and are employed and their main goal is to make sure that, uh, that they'd like to keep their jobs. So uh, at that point, it's all hands on deck and we get involved in making sure they have the proper accommodations at work to make things easier for them. And that could, that could involve anything from desk placement, office placement, lighting for glare and brightness or dimness of lighting control. Um, it could involve pathways for getting through complicated areas. So if they're in the middle of a, of a, a big cube farm, <laughs> we make sure that they get on the ends and easier to access uh, exits and entrances. Uh, my role would be involved in technology where I will work with their IT department to uh, make sure whatever the adaptive software is uh, determined to be best for them and part of their training is properly installed and set up on their computer, um, which you know, could involve magnification, screen reading, could involve OCR scanning and reading programs, things along those lines. So um, you know, we're there to make sure that if you have a job, we wanna try and do everything we can to make sure you keep that job and develop the skill set you need to deal with uh, your vision loss and to continue to be functional and, uh, and efficient. Secondly, I, I work with uh, people who have lost their jobs or are unemployed and are seeking employment and are dealing with blindness and visual impairment. And we will at that point get involved in assessing them and evaluating them and determining what, what tools uh, are needed for them to you know, return to work or go to work. And we develop the training program specific to make sure that they have that skill set to do the jobs that are part of their goal for returning to work. Uh, I do a lot of work with uh, high school students transitioning to college. Same thing, working with them coming out of schools, whether they're going to school in mainstream programs, have had TBIs, we still wanna make sure that they have had the proper exposure to the type of technology or the type of services or the types of products that will help them succeed in school. So we'll work with them, we'll evaluate them and uh, train them and the commission, the New York State Commission for the Blind, if they're involved in a full-time full program for going to school, we'll make sure that they have the equipment, software, and sponsor the training they need to succeed. And lastly, probably one of my favorite things I do at the Lighthouse is I work with the Saturday Youth Program. So I work with six to 13 year olds, uh, introducing them to technology, making sure they understand it, work with it, it benefits them and integrate into what they do for school. And I, have to, I do have to say that I sometimes have a few students uh, that teach me things there. So they're, you know, some of them are extremely bright and really in depth and no technology. Uh, I'm working with now with an eight year old who just runs circles around <laughs> most of the people I know in the tech world. It's just, it's phenomenal, but it's very fulfilling and rewarding. So um, other than that, when you come, you know, the Lighthouse primarily, you know, it is, it is, we do a lot of services all under one roof. So uh, if you're dealing with vision loss or, or, or have experience with vision loss or, or concerned about things, uh, primarily a lot of people come to us initially when they come to the Lighthouse for low vision exams and they'll meet our low vision specialists who can often identify the, you know, the, um, the situation that's uh, causing their visual impairment. Some of them learn for the first time exactly what it is. They've been, they've been referred over to us by ophthalmologists or other opticians that are spotting something but don't quite have a feel for it. From there, they usually will get a recommendation and an introduction to the New York State Commission for the Blind who actually sponsors most of our students that we work with. Um, the commission uh, basically will sit down and, and assign a counselor to you 
Uh, and at that point, they will do the evaluation, work out your needs, determine a goal, and then uh, fulfill that requirement by sending you to either the Lighthouse, uh, Visions, which is another agency in New York City, and also Helen Keller for services. And those services will evolve, like I said, if you haven't had a low vision exam and you found the commission on your own, they'll send you for a low vision exam. You can work with our orientation and mobility where you'll deal with uh, you know, te te technicians and specialists who will take you out and show you how to uh, independently navigate and uh, maneuver the streets of New York City or the suburbs where you may live, how to access public transportation, things like that. Um, we have vocational rehab therapists, which will come to your home, and they will introduce you to some simple technologies that will make your life easier in the kitchen or in the home place, uh, just to make your life easier and allow you to be a little more independent. Go over cooking. Uh, they do a lot of work now with uh, iPhone, iPhone apps as well and iPad apps as well for the home to help the individuals at home. Um, and they also uh, will introduce you to the uh, Google personal assistants and uh, and the uh, A-Lady assistants, uh, Alexa. I hope I didn't set everybody's Alexa off by saying it. Uh, and, uh, and, and to talk to you about some of the smart devices that you can, uh, you can actually access with using those type of personal assistant technologies. Okay, so actually, so, and the other things we do too, so if you come to Lighthouse, you, you get the vocational rehab therapy. If you come in and it's determined that you need keyboard remediation or some kind of academic uh, remediation to just bring you up to speed, whether you're gonna go to school, transition to college, uh, or just to make sure that you meet the minimum requirements that the state does have for training, um, and that being 20 words, proficiency of 20 words per minute in typing and a full knowledge of the keyboard. And it's very important uh, for the, those that we do work with and teach that uh, when you are introduced to adaptive technology and you have low vision, the keyboard becomes your primary uh, mode of accessing the computer and technology. Even if you're low vision and using, using a magnification program, if you can learn the keyboard commands, it can make your life a lot easier. Um, even sighted users who actually use keyboard commands are a lot quicker with the uh, accessing the computer and doing things as well. So good keyboard uh, uh, knowledge is, and uh, skill set is good. The academic side, again, math remediation or reading comprehension or dealing with note taking, things along those lines, which will help students succeed in school or help people through the training programs that we put through for them. They can, they can just have that skill set so when we start to proceed, it'll work out well. Uh, after all that, they'll come to Adaptive Technology for training and work with me at the Lighthouse or Cheryl Chung, who is my counterpart, uh, and we'll, we'll work with individualized plans. All our training is done one-on-one, -on -one, and it is based on your goals and your learning experience and your technical aptitude. And one of the things that we do try to incorporate at the Lighthouse in, in the teaching side of things is patience. We understand that there is a, there's a fear factor involved with many people who come in. Um, I work with, like stated earlier, six-year-olds uh, up to 13, but I also have students that are in their 90s sometimes. Um, everybody has the right to come in for training if their goal is to maintain some form of employ employment. A lot of them are self-employed. A lot of them are you know, psychotherapists, things along those lines where they maintain their, their practices and we'll work with them and and no matter how old, how old you are or what your technical aptitude is, and we'll be as patient as we can and we'll tailor the, the training technique that we have, that we have developed to, to work with whatever can get you to build that skill set. Um, average training can take place anywhere from 30 hours and I've worked with people as, as many as 80 hours. So it, it, it's all individual based and there's no rush on that. So we, we wanna make sure that if you come in for, to learn what you wanna learn that when you leave, you not only know how to get from A to B, but if you have to go A to D, you have the tools and you have the ability to understand the concepts and you have the, the training to, to actually research something and figure it out yourself if you can. So like I stated earlier, when you come in, we do a readiness evaluation. After that point, we do a, an assessment and that's where we actually dealt take a deep dive into what you know about computers, what you know about the business applications that you use at work, whether it be Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Outlook for email, or if you're doing Gmail or Yahoo using a web browser and web browsers themselves and how you surf the internet. So we'll cover all that and just evaluate how you currently do things 
where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, so that when we do set up your training program, we know what areas to focus on and concentrate on and, uh, and complement the things that you already know with alternative ways to do it using the types of technology that we'll introduce you to. Um, in the magnification side, if you're low vision, we will work with products like Zoom Text. We'll work with Windows Magnifier, which has really come a long way in the past five, six years. Uh, and if you're using a Mac, if that's your preference, we will work with Zoom and go over some of the deep, finer details that you may not know about it already. Um, on the screen reader side, and we do encourage people to start using screen readers as a complement to work. So if um, it will make you faster, especially if you start, once you cross over that three and a half to four times magnification level, you can really, really improve your efficiency and productivity by introducing a screen reader it's better to have it there and not need it and then need it or not have it. So we'd, we'd like to make sure you, if you have it, have access to it, know how to use it. You can turn it on and off at your discretion. You know, we want independence for everybody, but we also respect autonomy. So you have the right to make those decisions. But again, having access to it and knowing how to use it is very important. And it will, it will really assist people who are trying to maintain employment and those seeking employment because it makes you faster, it makes you more efficient. You know, I had the benefit when I first was introduced to technology I mean, adaptive technology, the next speaker we have coming up, Chansey was my first adaptive technology specialist. And I learned a lot from, from Chansey. And she's probably the main reason I'm doing what I'm doing today. So I, I, I have a lot of respect for what she did. I always remembered almost everything she told me and taught me. And uh, it is something that I felt like I could give back. So I fell back on my my core base of, of, of expertise was technology, but I knew nothing about adaptive tech. So, you know, maybe the transition was a little easier for me, but um, it's something that I felt once that I could, I could really master this and was something I felt I could give back to the, to the community as well. In addition to dealing with the adaptive technology, we also want to make sure if you go to work, you know how to use all those big business applications like Microsoft Word, like Excel, like PowerPoint, like Outlook. And it's very important to know how to do them quickly and efficiently. If you're a screen reader, we will encourage you in the beginning, we'll let you work at you know, screen reading rates at, at a conversation level, which is great. This is one of the things that Chancey pointed out to me early on is if I'm listening to that computer at normal speech rate, I'm only listening to it at around 170 to maybe 175 words per minute. Uh, my, my cited counterparts are reading that material anywhere from 300 to 350 words a minute. So I'm, uh, I'm working at twice, twice the rate of speed as they are if I don't start developing that skill set. And it's something that works, works very well if you put the time in. And just over time, you just bump up that speech rate a little bit, whether it's on your iPhone, if you're using voiceover, or whether it's on a, on, or using JAWS or NVDA or using Narrator. You can do that and just take a little time and just bump it up a little bit each week or every other week. And after three or four months, you're listening to it at a rate of 300 words a minute or more, and you're keeping up with everybody in your office if, you, uh, if, if you're working. So, But that's what you also need if you're going to return to work. Because, you, you know, at the end of the day, we work mostly nine to five. And if, you know, five o'clock, a lot of times those, those pa that paperwork and reports are due. So in college, I tell my students all the time, yes, you can get away with it because, you know, you may be up till one, two, three in the morning doing your papers and no one cares as long as you hand them in on time. Uh, but at work, sometimes you get, you'll get a, a notice to get something done that day and you have to be able to do it. So we, we try to make sure that, you know, we point people in the right direction. We set them up properly, we train them properly and give them the knowledge base and the skill sets. So when they go to work, they can, they can sit there and compete and keep that job. It's one thing to get a job, it's another thing to keep it. So we wanna make sure that that doesn't turn out to be a 30 day blunder. We want them to be there, get past that 90 day mark, get past whatever it is for their, um, um, you know, their minimum requirement for full-time employment to, to go forward and, uh, and get them past that, so. Uh, one of the other areas we do work with too, if you are working or going to school, we will work in addition to the magnification screening software, the business applications. We'll work with the OCR scanning and reading software that's out there where you can use a scanner to quickly scan something, a multi-feed scanner to scan multi-page documents or pages out of a book or periodical. And it's basically just using a scanner, scan it in and uh, products like OpenBook, Kurzweil and Abbey Fine Reader, which we use both on the Mac and on the PC side now when in teaching. Uh, so that will convert from text to speech for you. 
And then from there, you could actually cut, copy and paste, read it. Uh, you can save it as a Word document and you usually integrate it into other documents. You know, just make sure you're not plagiarizing you know, as we tell our students all the time, but it just gives them access. Once you scan it, once you've done it, you have it. You can also use those programs to deal with those, those tricky PDF files that are sent to you in emails as attachments and uh, have those you know, converted to text to speech and make your life a lot easier as well. Uh, in addition to that, we do also work with the uh, iOS devices. Um, I'm very familiar with that. I, I believe I, I was the first trainer in New York State to be approved to do uh, iOS training. I, I worked with Janice O'Connor from the New York State Commission for the Blind to put the first curriculum together and have that set up. Um, it is something that we do as part of our ATC training. So if, if someone comes to us for training, we will not only work with the technology on the computer side, we will also make sure they know how to use their, their iPhone and their iPad and, and the important applications that are there for them to use and you know, that relate to their business. And, and that can vary depending on the type of business that, that you're involved in. Um, so we will customize that the application process to what you are doing. Uh, we mostly don't work with social media apps unless that is something to do with your work. If you're involved with that, then yeah, we'll work with you know LinkedIn and we'll work with we'll work with you know Facebook and we'll work with Twitter and things like that with people who are involved in that. LinkedIn, I'll usually take time and show people because if they're going to be looking for work, it's a good resource for, for finding work. Um, I'm a big proponent of that. Um, my youngest daughter recently graduated last May and she found her own job on LinkedIn and is very, very happy right now, has a very, very good job uh, as an event coordinator coordinator and doing outreach and it worked out really well for her and it has worked out for some, for some of our students as well. From there, I'm um, just gonna check the time a second here just to see how much time I have. Okay, so I got a few minutes left here, five minutes. All right, we just launched a new tech center at the Lighthouse Guild. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen some of the publicity that's been going on. We, I know we were featured on CBS, New York One, and there's been a lot of different uh, newspaper articles been written around New York City about it. So we, we had a new CEO join our company, Dr. Calvin Roberts came in a couple of years ago. Um, Dr. Cal is an ophthalmolo ophthalmologist and he's also a surgeon, eye surgeon. And then he also spent uh, 18 years, I believe in corp the corporate world working. Recently came in as our CEO and he has a strong emphasis on technology, which you know, I, I, I embraced when he, when he joined us. And uh, we've done a lot, of, uh, a lot of things, upgrading our, our adaptive technology center with new computers since he's joined. And we recently launched a new adaptive, uh, our new tech center, which you know, encompasses the entire 11,000 square foot area that includes low vision, occupational therapy, um, complete display area and inventory of all kinds of adaptive tech and using magnifiers, many wearable devices that allow you to see, convert text to speech. Um, and we've also put in a, a, a home, uh, a home-based like small New York City apartment where we have a full kitchen, smart kitchen, uh, living room, bedroom, things like that. So using, using devices like, um, like the Amazon Echo technology and using Google's technology, you can use a personal speech devices or a personal assistance to just speak to them to unlock and lock your door, you know, do things in, in your refrigerator, know what's in, what's in your refrigerator, um, access me, uh, menu systems for recipes, for cooking. We have a full, full stove, which you can access that way and you know, turn it on, turn it off, set your temperatures. Uh, same thing with the microwave, washer and dryer, dishwasher, lights, uh, thermostat. All these things are on display and we will actually, our vocational rehab therapists will work with uh, people to teach them if you incorporate some of this in your home to work with that as well. It works really well with, um, with some of our older uh, students or clients that come in. Uh, people who experience macular degeneration later in life, where they will run sometimes the full gamut, having to uh, deal with their typing skill set because they've been hunting and pecking for 40 years in, in, their, in, the, in the field, and all of a sudden they're, they're having difficulty doing that. So um, they'll go in there and sit in there and get their keyboard remediation from, uh, from, our, from our, our specialists there and uh, work with them, teach them that skill set, and then from there we'll, we'll go in and show them how to do things using that keyboard and 
and it's, you know, once they get used to that, you know, the mouse becomes something almost antiquated if they do it properly and work with it. So it's, uh, you know, most of the time, if I'm ordering a mouse, when I put equipment recommendation in for someone with low vision after they've gone through training, it's there in case something happens and somebody sighted needs to get on the computer for, it just makes it easier for them. So, but uh, those are the things that we're doing at the Lighthouse. We're very excited. Um, the development of the tech center is basically around community. So we are working with developers, entrepreneurs, engineers, academics, physicians, and we have a lot of end users of tech coming in and we're just setting up offices and workshops and round tables and just trying to do the best we can to advance the ex existing technology we have out there and also to develop new technologies. So sometimes trying to reinvent the wheel for some of these small entrepreneurs is a very hard task to do. So system integration and bringing people together can sometimes help develop some really unique and new products. And that's, that's some of the things that we have going on there. Uh, we recently hired a new uh, chief technical officer, um, Brian, Dr. Brian Walensky, who is a low vision specialist and just came over to us from ORCAM, where he's been doing a lot of work uh, uh, internationally with ORCAM, just bringing awareness of, of technology, products, low vision, things like that. He was a big presenter over the years at CSUN, and, but this time he went to CSUN and was presented uh, for the Lighthouse. Uh, for those of you who don't know, CSUN is one of the premier adaptive technology annual conferences that we have in the United States. So he was out there. I believe Chancey was out there presenting as well. So uh, I didn't make this trip this year. I went the year that COVID broke out and I decided I'd wait, I'd wait to when it reopened before I go back out. So, but um, overall, that's it. Uh, I'll be here for Q and A at the end. If anybody has any questions and uh, you know, like I said, the best way to reach us is uh, Lighthouse Guild International in New York City and uh, or uh, you can also request if you have a New York State Commission for the kind uh, Commission for the Blind Counselor, you can ask them about services at the Lighthouse as well. So thank you. Thanks Ed for a very comprehensive overview of the Lighthouse Guild. I did actually pop into the technology unit uh, during the week and it was extremely impressive. I did wow. even visit the, that small little apartment in there as well oh, cool. and saw next, the devices. Yeah. Next time, and, uh, next time you come in, say hello. <laughs> yeah, I will. I think actually you were in the middle of a meeting when I was there, but um, it was yeah. very impressive. And there were lots of kind of toys to play with. And yeah. I really recommend people to pay a visit there. Um, it was very impressive because I haven't been there for yeah. a couple of years. Yeah. So the it was only, great. The only, we, yeah, the only thing we ask if people do want to come in, just please call and uh, make an appointment. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yes, in fairness, I did, I did do that. Yeah, exactly. Sure, I was awesome. speaking to Ina. Yeah, so th right. thanks a million for that. No problem. Um, so last, but definitely not least, is Chansey Fleet. Chansey is the Assistive Technology Coordinator at the New York Public Library. Chansey manages a team of both staff and volunteers who provide one-on-one -on -one technology coaching and group workshops, which is available for all and is totally free. So with that, I'll hand over to Chansey. Hi, thank you so much. Am I coming through clear? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, so nice to be with in such good company with Dory and Ed. I feel like we're all pretty like-minded and I appreciate so much the shout out from Ed. It was a pleasure to work with you and it's just been amazing following the evolution of your career and your mentorship now of, of other folks in the blind and low vision community. So my name is Chansey, my pronouns are she, her. I identify as blind. I started capitalizing that because I'm tired of reporters correcting it to visually impaired. I identify as blind. Um, and I run uh, AT over here at the New York, uh, New York Public Library, Andrew Haskell Braille and Talking Book Library, the little tiny library branch with a very long name. If you're not already familiar with us, uh, come, come for a visit. We have Braille and talking books that are available to anybody who has a print reading disability, including blindness, low vision, trouble holding a book, reading disabilities. And we are more than happy to send those out to you by mail. Our digital talking books do come with a free player and we will mail that too. Um, and if you don't wanna take braille books on the subway, we can mail those to you as well, or you're welcome to come in and browse the biggest braille collection uh, that's browsable, we think, in the country and pick out your talking books here. Or you're welcome to download our app. If you use a smartphone, iOS, Android, Kindle Fire, you can download the free Bard mobile app Braille and audio reading and download. And you'll find everything that you'd find in a regular library collection. And you'll also find 
a host of different magazines and you'll find music scores and even music instruction. And so check out that app. We also have an app that you can use whether or not you have a print reading disability. So for friends and family, please point out Simply E. It's a, a fully universally accessible um, e-reading app that works on iOS and Android, and it does work beautifully with voiceover and talk back as well. It has different contrast options, um, and it works for sighted people too. There's no, uh, all you need for that is a library card. Sighted friends, family, care attendants, those types of folks also might enjoy knowing that when you come into the New York Public Library, Andrew Haskell, um, on West 20th Street, that you can actually pick up your holds. So if you want print books, if you want DVDs, you can do that here. Sign in with your NYPL credentials and send your book pickups to this branch and we're more than happy to hold them for you here while you're here for other reasons. Um, and we also have free open public computer labs that are open to everybody, blind sighted, somewhere in between. We have free Wi-Fi, we have comfortable seating, we have places for you to charge your phone, and we've got a beautiful children's room that contains print and braille books and accessible toys. And uh, we have a fabulous children's librarian, Debbie, who does uh, little movers and story time and arts and crafts activities and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, for the grown-ups, we've got a book club that meets on Saturdays, and we've got a, an open book hour that meets, I think, on Tuesdays, where you can talk about the books that you are dying to recommend to other folks. We have a new crossword club that meets uh, on a weekday morning, and it's a joint effort solving crosswords together. That's pretty fun. We're about to launch into a series of Saturday film screenings. We are on the verge of doing some verbal, uh, descriptive, and hands-on stuff with the Coaster House Museum. That's going to be coming up in May. We have an audiobook studio that produces books uh, of interest to New Yorkers and uh, all the many cultures that one finds in New York. So we uh, we produce a lot of things right now. We're in the in the midst of producing some graphic novels like Fun Home and uh, Persepolis and The Watchmen. So really excited about that. Um, and we have reader services. So if you've got a pile of mail that's in print and you need to sort through it, or you've got forms that need to be filled out, or you've got you know uh, anything of that nature, typing that needs to be done. We have volunteers, readers that can help with that, and we'll, uh, we'll hook you up with our volunteer services coordinator to meet with someone on a weekly or a monthly basis. We've got CCTVs, so you can come into the branch with no appointment if you just want to pick up books, use the Wi-Fi, use the labs independently, pick up Braille books, um, and we've got CCTVs with and without speech, so if you need to magnify stuff, you can do that, no appointment required. We have Braille embossers and regular print printers. So if you need to print your resumes, your speech notes, letters to blind kids at camp, whatever, you can come in and do that. Um, you can use the Braille embossers without an appointment, although only if you already know how. Um, I'm gonna talk about coaching in a second. So anything where you need a human being to support you, you make an appointment. Anything that's just regular library business, you just come on in. And again, we're located at 40 West 20th Street between Fifth Avenue and Sixth Avenue right off the one train in the F and the R, pretty convenient. Um, and we are online at talkingbooks.nypl.org. Again, talkingbooks, plural, dot NYPL for New York Public Library, dot org. So that's what all my fabulous colleagues are doing all day. Uh, I do tech all day, and that means that I curate the assistive technology that's available in the branch. This and every branch throughout our whole system has JAWS on every machine. You do not have to wait for an accessible machine because they are all accessible. And we have Zoom Text Fusion on every machine in every one of our branches. So if you already know how to use them, come use them. The library is your space. We also recently migrated to Windows 10. I know we're on Windows 11 now, but you know, it's a big, big library system, that happens. But we're on Windows 10 now, so that means if you prefer to use Magnifier or built-in Narrator, those are there for you as well. A uh, couple of our lab computers have Duxbury, so if you have Braille translation needs, you can do that. Uh, 
And we've got Kurzweil 1000 in old but gold. Uh, if you need to scan in printed material with a flatbed scanner and kind of back, batch scan it and get it into an accessible format and mark it up, you can do that with our Kurzweil 1000 software. That's all available in our public labs. Another thing that I do here is curate our one on one program of technology coaching. So we do not offer the same type of training that vocational rehabilitation agencies do. We already have some wonderful agencies doing a fine job at that. We did not need to replicate that. So we're not competitors. And in fact, there are lots of folks that work with Lighthouse Guild, Visions, Helen Keller, and they'll refer to us and we'll refer to them. It is, in my view, a great idea for you to open a commission case if you're eligible and get all of the formal training that you're qualified to receive and make the most of that awesome opportunity to get structured, deep, scored, and assessed technology knowledge. That will really prepare you for work or school. What we do is what any library would do for somebody who is typically cited. We provide a more relaxed, unstructured, user-led experience without a ton of commitment and without any paperwork. We do not care if you're legally blind. I have fully sighted folks that come in who have migraines or vestibular issues and want to learn to use a screen reader. It's fine. I have families that are sighted that want to learn to use a screen reader to support someone. It's fine. I have braille readers that are cited, and I have a lot of people that are working on their certification of legal blindness, working on their commission cases. Anybody is welcome. Our one on one coaching will have a brief conversation with you, maybe 10 or 15 minutes on the phone, figure out what you're all about, what your goals are, talk to you about any scaffolding that needs to happen. So if you want to be able to host a Zoom meeting, but you can't yet type or use an iPhone, we're gonna to need to teach you some screen reader skills or magnification skills and work up to hosting that Zoom meeting. So we give you a bit of a roadmap and then you'll meet with a coach every week if you need a coach every week, typically for 60 to 90 minutes. And it might be a staff member or it might be a volunteer who's a native user of the technology that you're learning, but it will be somebody that knows your pathway, knows your road and who's patient. We don't have a lot of requirements, except that you either show up on time or communicate clearly if your, uh, your plans have changed, and that we work with you to find a way for you to document what you're learning or take notes. If you're transitioning into vision loss, it can be really hard to figure out how to take notes at first. So we'll talk about approaches like Braille, typing, voice recorders, either on a computer or smartphone or standalone, um, and then when you're first starting out, if you absolutely do not yet have a note taking method, we can do things like record the session for you and get it onto a flash drive and you can play that on one of our free digital players. But we make an agreement with everybody that we are going to find a way to make notes happen because documentation is just something that will empower your life. Your goal does not have to be vocational. It can be. We can help you with resumes. We can help you get your typing skills ready for a typing assessment. We can help you practice the things that you're learning elsewhere. We can totally work with you on Microsoft Word and web skills, but we can also do things that are not vocational. If you're trying to do your fantasy football or you need to set up a Tinder profile, we've got you. Every goal is valid because this is a public library. There are some people that see us every week for a long time and develop a relationship with a staff member or volunteer. And there are other people that have become pretty confident and proficient with their tech or who have limited tech needs who might you know, see us once every two years or so and either way is fine. You can call us. My, uh, our phone number is 212-206-5400 and I'm at extension three. And typically we can see you within a week maybe two at the most. Um, so that's our one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And I will say, I am the only full-time staff member in this department. Right now, we have one part-timer who is our expert on Android, all things magnification and all things Spanish language. And we are about to be hiring for another position. So stay tuned on that. If you know anyone, please send them our way. Um, but we wouldn't be able to do the 150 hours of one-to-one -one that we do without our amazing community of volunteers. We have volunteers that work several hours a week, a couple shifts, and we have volunteers that help with workshops, which I'll talk about in a second, and graphics. 
if you're interested in volunteering and helping somebody else get the most out of their life with technology, please be in touch. We always need more hands. We continue to grow and try to scale sustainably. And we are always welcoming of more people. We also often host interns. Um, so far, everybody in our department, myself, uh, Nefertiti, who just left us to go pursue her dreams in video description, um, my colleague Dario, and uh, Baksha, who we just hired in a different outside the tech department, all of, uh, all of us were either former volunteers or former interns. And we love to see people grow here as volunteers and, and then look for roles sometimes in the library system or uh, other places throughout the city. This is a really good place to get your sea legs and develop your professional skills and your soft skills and, and be part of a really awesome community. We also do a, uh, a selection of group workshops, both in person and virtually. During the pandemic, when we went virtual, we actually grew our attendance about 500%. And we increased the frequency of our group workshops. Some of our feature workshops are one time. So you'll go for an hour and a half and learn about online shopping with accessibility in mind. Or we'll do an hour and a half on how to use Bard and Bookshare. And you just sign up for that and you attend and then you're done. We also have recurring features. So on Saturdays in person and online, we have a braille study group. We welcome readers of all levels of vision and all levels of experience. If you wanna to learn to read full books, that's great. If you simply wanna label your spices or learn to play cards, that's fine too. Our youngest students have been in their you know, elementary years and our oldest student to date, I believe is 94. So we've got a place for everyone. If you're comfortable coming in person, come on over, we would love to see you. If not, we're on Zoom as well, Saturday mornings and Tuesday evenings, and we can do things like help you sign up for hadley.edu, the free Braille by Mail course. And those Zoom calls just are sort of a support and accountability space where you can ask questions, get clarification, talk about equipment, talk about techniques, that kind of thing. We have a Saturday afternoon chat for voiceover beginners on the iPhone and another one beyond the basics. That's happening monthly on Saturdays. We have uh, just launched our third cohort of 12 week intensives for screen reader users. All of them this year begin on April 5th, which is the coming Tuesday. And you can sign up to take a 12 week uh, course on JAWS, on NVDA or on VoiceOver for the Mac. Each course comes with the expectation that you're gonna attend most of the sessions. We assign a volunteer note taker that sends out notes. We don't record anything, but we do have a recap before each session where we go over what happened last week. And we have a Google group where people can correspond. So if you're craving a little bit more structure, um, then the 12 week opportunities might be for you. We also do rotating quarterly workshops on just uh, different emerging topics that are outside what you usually find in an AT program. So for example, this spring, we're doing a discussion group on memes and another one on emoji because that's something that's mysterious to a lot of blind people. So check out our spring calendar. It's under the current newsletter on our website. So talkingbooks.nypl.org, go to the heading that says current newsletter, or you can give us a call. And if your computer skills are not there yet, we can walk you through what might be interesting to you in the spring newsletter. Last thing that I'll mention is that in 2017, with a little bit of funding from the commission and a little bit of funding from NYPL itself, we launched the Dimensions Project, which is a free and open lab for skill building and creation where anybody blind and sighted can come in and create tactile graphics, braille documents, and 3D models for accessibility. So for example, if you are curious what the SpaceX rocket looks like, or if you need a tactile map of the neighborhood that you're moving to, or if like me, you just moved during the pandemic and you're renovating your house and you needed floor plans that you could touch, if you're into art and you want to see some Keith Haring, some Georgia O'Keeffe, if you're into electronics and you need to see some circuit diagrams, what we do is we offer free training on the basics of tactile design. And then we offer free access to equipment such as 3D printers, tactile graphics embossers like the Columbia, swell form machines that kind of puff up and make a high contrast tactile graphic and analog drawing tools like the sensational blackboard and tactile drafting tablets. We even have the graffiti here, the first generation graffiti, which is a pretty low resolution dynamic tactile display. It's the first of its kind. Um, 
And whether your project is something simple like a holiday card or something ambitious um, like a floor plan, this is a great place to build community and learn how to do tactile graphics, either create them or read them as a blind person. We believe that it is just as necessary to end image poverty in the blind community as it is to empower people with access to text and the web, because we do not live in a text only world and we believe that images are for everyone. Um, so that's my spiel. I'm happy to take any questions and just first and foremost, everybody's welcome. Please come check us out. We've got something for almost everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Chancy, for that phenomenal pre presentation. Uh, our Stargards group actually does have our monthly meetings, well, pre-COVID anyway, at the Andrew High School Library. Um, and honestly, I can say that I didn't realize you did half the things you actually do. So we may have to tap into that a little bit more. But thanks again. Yeah. And uh, hopefully everybody on this call will realize that you know, technology is your friend. It definitely makes life easier for all of us. So all I would say is, embrace it and learn it from all three people who are on this call and gave fantastic presentations so thanks to, thanks to all three of you uh, really appreciate it and uh, with that i'll hand back to to brie hi this is you're on brie this is brie again um i do want to echo fiona thank you guys so much for such incredible uh some incredible um, presentations. I do um, want to open the floor to Q and A, uh, and I have one question to kick it off. Um, if I think this is directed to Dory and her presentation, someone asked, "Does the rep for the the Aria app um, does the rep order the lift to your location, or do you need to place the order yourself?" Um, yes, I believe that what you have to do in order to uh, take advantage of that option is you have to give them access to your app. So I don't know how that is. They share access with your app and then they will order it. Yes. Did you hear me? No. Here I am again. Yes. Yes, we did, Tori. Yeah. Um, if anybody Thanks. else has any other questions. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, please feel free to come off mute, raise your hand, or send a message in the chat. Um, hi, guys. It's Victor. How are you guys doing? Hey. Hi, Chansey. Hi, Dory. Hi, Ed. Hi, Victor. Hi. Um, Dory, you're right, um, but you left out something. If you're an Amazonian, like I work for Amazon now. I do the overnight deliveries for Amazon. Okay. okay. Um. Amazon, actually, Amazon, uh, Ira becomes free for all Amazonians who work for Amazon. Fantastic. So they have launched um, a collaboration with Amazonians who work at Amazon as well as the Orchem and other stuff. But if we can't get that, which I'm at DYY6, that's the building station I'm under, mm -hmm. I, will then, I will then use Ira to navigate the building. Uh, it's kind of hard at first because they got balloons and stuff everywhere, but yeah <laughs> that's fantastic thank you victor i didn't know that and i should yeah, mention oh, that for anyone's for anyone's employer uh you know it's an it's a it's an option you can ask your employer to give you access for your hours at work and uh the access is i, I looked into it for for a few different things and it's very reasonable so i, I think it's fantastic if some if if you have that just so that we have a little disclaimer here be my, uh, be my Eyes is free, period. Sorry you left that out, dear. Be My Eyes is free, period, yes. Okay, and uh, Brie, could I take a moment, please? Absolutely. Okay, the person you're now listening to who had technical problems, and it's interesting for a systems engineer to have technical problems like that. Uh, I am Carl Gruber, the president of the chapter, our uh, now renamed chapter, it's called the New York City uh, Metro chapter. We're covering Westchester, uh, Airfield or Southern Connecticut and Long Island and a part of New Jersey, the Eastern part, I believe. And so uh, quite a, quite a uh, uh, how shall we say, audience. There's no question that the three presenters were terrific. I mean, I know all three of them and I couldn't expect anything more than what they did. They are the best. Uh, I'd like to thank a few people. Uh, our Vice President, Fiona Gibbons, very, as you can tell, a uh, person 
in the know and doing things for us. Uh, I'd like to thank, uh, I don't know if Sherry's on, Sherry Rogers, who's the facilitator, managing facilitator for all our support groups. Uh, we have groups for Star Guards. There's a Queens group, and there's a Manhattan group, which Ed is the facilitator of. So we've got a lot of people intermixed here. Um, Chauncey, nothing ever surprises me with you. You're always the smoothest and the best. Uh, <laughs> I, I always enjoy listening to you. And in regards to our FFB, our Foundation Fighting Blindness crew, there's Bree Mullins, uh, who uh, I work very closely with. Uh, Bree is the um, engagement uh, manager. Uh, chapter engagement manager is the exact title. And uh, this also uh, involved with us is the <laughs> incomparable Katie Van Ben, ben Shorten. Uh, never get her name 100%. Uh, but what could I say? Katie is like phenomenal. And her new assistants, uh, uh, Molly. And Molly, I don't know if you're on, but maybe you are. Uh, but I want to thank the, those are the people who help us and, and, and guide us in what we do as a chapter here in the New York metropolitan area. So I'd like to thank you all for being here. I'll now throw it back to Bree and the questions and answer period. Thank you so much, Carl. Um, and uh, yeah, I would love to just you know open the floor again to any questions um, that you guys have um, and. We can uh, wrap up in just a few minutes. If... Come on, folks, don't be brash, bashful. <laughs> I think Dory was going to mention a, a few tips from Siri. So maybe maybe that's worth just spending a couple of minutes on, Dory. Yes. If you're okay with that. Oh, sure. Why not? Well, right. So um, we were just talking about some uh, some of the things that Siri makes easy. And um, and I've discovered recently that there is even more than I knew. So I am working on a, a trying to put together a comprehensive form of things like this. But we found uh, the Stargard group found it interesting. And I've been using this for a while that um, you can, if your phone is ringing, you can simply ask Siri to answer just by saying, hey, Siri, answer. So you don't have to touch it. I mean, if you're at your job or you're, you're working at your desk, you don't have to touch it. It, just, it will just answer for you. And it's so smooth and amazing. You can also say, hey, Siri, answer on speaker. So that way it just starts on the speaker right away. And it's not even noticeable to the other person at all. And, and on my phone, because I use voiceover, it tells me who I'm picking up from anyway, but it probably already has. Um, the other thing, now this was something that really started with the AirPods. So there is a way to also disconnect if you're wearing an AirPod, but it doesn't work only if you're speaking. So if you're wearing an AirPod, uh, you can say, if you're in, you know, walking around, um, or doing something else, or it's in your, your phone is in your pocket, you can say, hey Siri, end, or end, end call, and, and, and the phone call will disconnect. I love these things, it just happen automatically. Um, I also recently discovered something that I'm, I'm fascinated by, now Siri's talking to me in my ear, um, something that I'm fascinated by, uh, because I didn't realize that it existed and I'm not sure if it's working completely smoothly, but um, I was trying to figure out, I, I open every single app, every single app by saying, hey Siri. I barely, I, I mean, I, I can find it on my own, whatever, but it just takes extra time. So I just say, hey Siri, open whatever it is. And, um, and it opens, boom. Um, so that's a beautiful thing. Uh, so I just discovered because I wasn't able to open the magnifier in the phone and the magnifier, I was using the commands that I use for voiceover, which is turn on or turn off voiceover, but the commands are different. So that's what you always have to know exactly what your, your, your exact words, right? Um, 
Although I think Syria should be a little more flexible, but, but not yet. So I couldn't say, um, uh, turn on the magnifier. What I needed to say was open magnifier because it's basically already turned, it has to already be turned on in settings. Uh, this, this was the, the, and then the second thing I discovered was, and this I actually love, um, the second thing I discovered was, you can now say, first of all, uh, speak screen, using speak screen. Speak screen does have to be turned on. I wanted it, I wanted it to be, Siri is just jabbering in my ear. I'm trying to shut her up. Um, I wanted to, I wanted it, to, I wanted to be able to, I wanted to be able to um, turn on speak screen using Siri, but it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. Uh, but if speak screen is turned on, anyone, now this might conflict a little bit with voiceover from time to time, but if you don't use voiceover, this is a beautiful thing. You can just simply say, when you're on a page of text, um, you can just say, hey Siri, speak screen. And she keeps talking and I can't shut her. Uh, so so um, you can just say, hey Siri, speak screen. And she starts to read. It works on the New York Times. It works on like anywhere that there's text to read. And here was my surprise. I read the New York Times with voiceover and it is littered with mispronunciations that I think are worse than ever and never really bothered me, but it drives me crazy how many words are mispronounced. But when Siri reads it, it's read perfectly. It's, it's, it's not the same. It's read perfectly and smoothly. So I've been using that more on apps like the New York Times. So that's, those are my interesting tips. Wow. Very interesting. Um, we do have two questions. Sherry, I see your hand is up. I'll say button. Hi, um, I, I was wondering, you mentioned that there are some, um, uh, man, uh, not manufacturers, uh, stores that have IRA. Yeah. If I were to go into Target, let's say, and I was looking for a particular item, do I turn on IRA to get, before I go into the store and say, I'm going into Target and um, I'm gonna look for a blouse and you know, in my size and this color. Yeah, you don't have to say anything in advance. And in fact, also Siri, um, uh, IRA is accessible with Siri. So you can open, just I would, this is what I would do, Sherry. I would say open IRA as I'm on my way into the store. Um, when you get it, when you get into the store, you tap um, call an eight, uh, make a. I forget what it says on there. Hold on. Open Ira. Oh, I'm in the other. Okay, the the main button on it says call Ira for free because even. If you haven't used it, a lot of the calls are free for the first five minutes. Not everything, but but many of them. So call our IRA for free. So before it starts to oh, and because you're because you're in a free access zone, you're calling for free. So you call IRA for free. Someone answers and says, "How can they help you?" And you tell them uh, that you're looking for what were you looking for? A blouse? Yes. Okay, so you tell them what you're looking for, what you, what you wanna find, and they'll help navigate you because they can navigate. This is also a beautiful thing because I mean, I'm dying, I'm waiting for interior, interior mapping that works so that, you know, so that you can get around places that you're not familiar with or that change often like supermarkets and stores, retail stores and that kind of thing. So if you, um, they can get you around the store, right? Um, and get you to where you need to go. And then they can help you find color, size. They can describe the uh, style of the blouse. Ah, it's fun, right? Good for shopping. You have a shopping companion. That's exactly how it works, Sherry. It's very easy. Alta, mute. Currently on mute. Yeah, Dory, can I just add to that? I know Ira also is offering computer assistance too, where they can actually log on to your computer and help you out as well if, if you have that set up with them in advance. Yeah, has that started? 
I think that's not start. It's it, it's coming it's, soon. I mean, uh, it's coming. Yeah, I know, yeah. I, yeah, I know. The we have uh, the next episode of that Real Blind Tech Show, the podcast that I co-host with Brian Fisher. Oh, okay, actually, right. That yeah, is where they can yeah. where they, where you can log on to them from your computer. What right. they've been offering tech support, but you are doing it usually through your phone, through the phone camera, and they'll help right. you. Right. right. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's. I think that's great too. I think there were a couple of questions in the chat that were directed toward Chancy. I don't know if she's still here. I'm here. I was just about to read them off. Um, so we have a question that says, uh, do you need an appointment at the library for assistance when it, and when is it open? So the rule of thumb is if you are just coming to the library to use things on your own, you don't need an appointment or to pick up books. But if you need a human being to support you, which would include tech appointments, um, then you do need an appointment. We are open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we're open Tuesday, Thursday from noon to seven, excluding holidays. And I also saw the question about being outside Manhattan. Um, if you would prefer not to come to our West 20th location, of course, you can go to lots of other library branches that aren't blindness centric throughout our system in the Bronx, uh, Manhattan and Staten Island, plus there's the Queens and Brooklyn Public Libraries. Um, again, our system does have JAWS and some text fusion at every branch, but we are the hub for assistive technology education. But we do uh, welcome everybody, whatever your geographical situation, to all of our virtual events. And the majority of our group workshops right now are either completely online or hybrid where you can choose. So feel free to peruse our spring newsletter and sign up for anything that you think. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, this was an incredible presentation by all three presenters. And I'm very excited to see the questions that we did get. Um, if you are looking for more information on getting involved in the chapter or events as a volunteer or a leader, please feel free to reach out to myself, uh, your president, Carl, or our director of events, Katie. Um, again, we will be putting those uh, contacts in the chat and I will be making sure you have them in the email that will come out on Monday um, with the recording of this presentation. Um, and with that, I will let you guys all get back to your day. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Great, great presentation. Thank you very much. It was very good. Fabulous stuff. Thanks so much. Alt mute. Currently on mute. Thanks all. Alt plus Thanks. Thank you very much. It was great. And Rogers has left the meeting.